In this video, I'm going to talk about the new data experience available within Microsoft Power Apps. Now, this data experience is available for Microsoft Power Apps. So if you go to make.powerapps.com, you will uh, find a settings over there to enable the new data experience. Now, uh, this new data experience may not be currently available in all the regions, but then I'm currently using the US region and I'm able to see that new data experience. So I'm just going to give you a high level walkthrough on what this new data experience is all about. Now, basically this new data experience gives you a modern look and feel to create dataverse tables. Now, uh, earlier when you uh, used to create dataverse table, you used to see a uh, an authoring interface whereby you can specify the table name, you can specify the column name, but then there was no visibility around the visual interface on how the relationships were placed between different tables. Now, uh, while creating a new table, now uh, there are a lot of AI infused features available to create tables. Now you can create tables by specifying the prompt and then it will automatically create table for you or suggest a table for you. And then on basis of that, you can modify the table schema. You can add a column, you can remove a column, you can change the data type. So you can do all those things. Now, AI related features were earlier available. Now, this is almost the same what was there previously, but then in the new interface, uh, the change which was done after build 2024, were uh, morely related to uh, showing off the relationship between two different tables or two different entities. Now, what are the functionality which are currently available? We can rename the column. We can view or hide the data list on the fly. We can change the column data type. We can define the relationship in a visual manner. Uh, and as you all know, picture is worth thousand words. So it will be very useful if you have a very complex data model within your Dataverse environment. Now, I've spotted some shortcomings from uh, uh, this entire new data interface. Now, the some functionality might arrive in the future release waves, or uh, some of them I was unable to spot in my tenant. So this is just my understanding. So what uh, shortcomings which I've identified in this new interface is I was unable to select a solution while creating a new table. So it was uh, resorting to the default solution, and there was no way to change the, uh, the solution file. Uh, uh, where I am provisioning this interface. Now, if I go, uh, if I create a table right from creating a solution, then this interface was not available. So I didn't had any uh, option to provision a new table. If I go, if I create a table from the solution perspective, if I navigate from a make.powerapps uh, home page interface perspective, then I was able to see the new interface, but then I was unable to create it, uh, create it in a different solution. Now, once you create uh, uh, your entire data structure or a table, then uh, you can save that um, uh, settings. You know, you can basically, you can save whatever work you have done, uh, but you cannot technically save your settings. So that means there is no way to get into the edit interface while uh, uh, once you provision your uh, Dataverse table. So, and also you cannot see the existing tables relationship. So take, for example, if you've already created say five tables and all those five tables are related uh, in a many to one or one to many fashion, then if you want to see the uh, ER diagram view of it, you will not be able to see that. Uh, so these are some of the shortcomings which I have uh, spotted. Now, how it looks. So uh, before we even go into it, you need to first enable the new data experience. So if you navigate to make.powerapps.com, so there is a switch, basically, you need to just turn this on. Now, as I mentioned to you, it is not available in all the tenants. So I'm in the United States tenant, and that's why I'm able to see this option. Now, if you want to enable other artificial intelligence or AI powered copilot features, then you need to turn on the uh, switch. Uh, by navigating to the environment, going into the settings and clicking on features, and then turning on enable new AI co-powered uh, AI powered copilot features for people who makes apps. Okay, so this is we are mainly talking from a uh, canvas or model driven apps perspective. Now, once you are in table, and if you click on create new table, then you will see a new interface which says starts with copilot, import a SharePoint list, import an Excel file, or you can start from blank. So if you select start from blank, then you should be able to see uh, an, an uh, a, a 
screen basically which will be segregated into two section on the top you will see a visual interface of the table whereby uh, it it closely resonates with an entity relationship diagram so you should be able to see various tables and the relationship which you have defined between those table and in the bottom half you should be able to see the data records okay so you can author uh, the schema and as well as you can add records into this interface as well which i'm going to demonstrate in a while okay so that's it from a theoretical perspective so let's jump into the demo so first thing first what you need to do is like if you want to uh, enable all the ai related uh, feature for power apps then you need to navigate to your environment so i'm just navigating to my environment and then i'm just clicking on settings and once you are within the context of your environment navigate to products go to features and then from there you can start enabling all the copilot related features okay and make sure that once you enable your copilot related features on in the bottom uh, part of the screen you just need to click on save okay so once you save this the setting will be saved so i've already set uh, or enabled the copilot related functionality then if i navigate to make.powerapps.com and if i go into the correct environment then in the home screen, you will see on the top right, there is a switch unit enabled. So that's the try the new data experience. Now, if you enable these two settings, then if you navigate to tables, then you will see an option called as create new table. So here you can create a new table. Now, remember, this is in a preview state. OK, so this is not a GA. So make sure that you uh, enable it in your dev or kind of uh, like a test environment. Now, once you create a new table, then uh, a, an interface will come up whereby it's, it looks similar to like a canvas whereby uh, you can play around with uh, the objects. Like you can drag and drop, you can edit the lines, you can uh, hover mouse over it. Uh, so it's, it's more like an authoring interface to author your uh, data model using graphical user interface. Now, while creating, I saw that it takes a while to provision this canvas. So it takes uh, uh, some time to show you the actual uh, authoring canvas. And then once it is loaded, you should be able to uh, start creating the data model, the desired data model. So let me copy the correct URL. So I'm just copying this URL and I'm, I'll be pasting it in my notepad now if you see over here the url it says make.powerapps.com and i believe this e is for the environment so this is the environment id uh, and then there is slash s and then you'll see data dash workspace question mark launch app designer equal to false okay uh, and this is the url which will uh, showcase you uh, the the new interface Okay, so let me refresh this as it is taking a while to load. And now once it is loaded, so I can see that choose an option to create table. I'll click on start from blank. And now if you see it is loaded successfully. Now here, uh, if I browse through the section, what I'm going to do is if I just hover my mouse and if I just click, uh, if I do a right click or a left click rather, then I should be able to move this around. Okay. Now I can zoom in, I can zoom out. And here I can see there is a icon. So if I click over here, I can, uh, I'll be able to place it on the uh, center of the screen. Now here you will see a map. So if you can see the show map and hide map. So what happens is like if this goes out of your vision, uh, then you can click from here you can just navigate from the show map or hide map option and then you will be able to properly navigate to the uh, correct table now in my case there are only one table uh, but if if it is crowded over here then you should be able to navigate very easily through this uh, map now from here you can uh, name the table so if i go to table and if i go to properties i can say that this table is say maybe sports okay so i can edit the display name i can edit the plural name i can put some description and i can set the primary column so if you see here primary column you can see new column over here but in advanced option you can see that 
uh, you can define the schema name as well. Now, if you see over here, then this is pointing to the default solution. So there is no way to change the uh, schema name from here. So this is one of the shortcoming which I have identified uh, while uh, creating this particular uh, table. Now I can click on save over here and now this particular table will get saved. Now, if I want to add a column, I can just click on edit column and I, I'll just call it sports name and I can click on update. But before than that, I'll click on advanced option to see I can even change the schema name from here as well. But you cannot change the solution on which this particular table is created. So I'll click on update and then I'll, I can start typing the, the name of the sport. So if I type in cricket, I can type in tennis. Okay. Now I can add a record over here. At the same time, if I click on new row over here, I can add a record. So let me add a couple of more sports. I can even delete a record. So if I type in something, if I select this particular record, okay, so let me select this record. I can even delete a row from here. So this will delete the row. I can add a new column from here. So if I add a new column, I can specify the display name. I can specify the data type. So maybe uh, just say, let me add one column called as Olympic sport and I'll put the data type as uh, maybe choice, yes, no, and label yes and no, default choice is yes, I'll click on save, okay? Now, if I go into this record, I can just say cricket is not an Olympic sport, tennis is not an Olympic sport, and pickleball is not an Olympic sport. So let me make tennis as Olympic sport, yes, okay? And then I can, uh, so this is my table basically. Now I can check the row ownership. So if I go into one record, I can actually see from this interface who owns that record. So this is row is owned by a user or a team or if the row is owned by an organization. So I can set those over here. I can click on properties and I can edit the table as well. Uh, and I can go into the full screen. So if I just want to see the view of uh, the, the record in a tabular format, I can see that. If I click on minimize, then I'll be able to see the dual view. And if I click on this three dot over here, I can hide the data section. So this is the data section. So I can hide this or I can view the data section and I can if I click over here, I can see the row ownership as well. So I can see the uh, from an ownership type perspective, this rows are owned by a user or a team, or I can change it to rows owned by an organization. I can delete the table from here. So if I just click over here and then I can delete the table, which I'm not gonna do. Uh, now, if you see this table, which we have created, let me go to view data. Now I can uh, do other things. I can click on new table and I can add a column and data. I can even describe a new table using Copilot, which I'm not going to do now because the purpose of this uh, demonstration is to just explore the data, uh, uh, the new data interface, so or new data experience. So if I click on new table and click on add columns and data, I should be able to add a new uh, table. So I'll just call it as country. Okay, or maybe I'll just call, just call it as playing country. Okay. Now this is an another table. Now again, if uh, if you see over here, this is a sports table. This is a playing country table. Uh, if I go into, if I just click it outside, and if I just click on this playing country, I should be able to uh, add a new row and new column. So let me edit this column, and I'll call it as country, and I'll click on update, and let me add a country, say India or USA. Australia. Okay, so I've added these three countries. Now I can even add a new column from here. So if I click on new column and now if I say I want to add a sports plate, okay, uh, and the data type is lookup. So I can do a lookup from here. So let me click on lookup as a data type. And now the related table is sports for me and I'll click on save. Now, what has happened is like a relationship has been formed between these two tables. So there is a sports table and there is a playing country table. Now, if I want to view the data, I can go here and I can view the data. Or if I click outside, the view data disappears and I can play around with it. I can click on this, I can click on the map and I can navigate. And if I click on this table, now I can specify that 
say take for example say india plays cricket and usa plays tennis and or maybe australia plays pickleball okay so this is how i have established the data relationship now from here if you see this relationship i can click on this relationship i can remove the relationship or i can edit the relationship so if you see i can edit the relationship from here and it will give you a nice visual by showing you the many side and the one side so playing countries many side and sports table is one side of the many to one relationship. I can change the relationship from one to many. Uh, I can change the display name. Now what happens is like once you establish this relationship, a new lookup column gets added to the, uh, the many side of the relationship table. Uh, and then this is the display name, this is a schema name, and this is the relationship name which is created. Uh, I can even add a new relationship on top of it. So if I click on new relationship, I can define further relationship and then it will add in another uh, line in this interface as well. So this is just one example uh, showing a relationship between two table. Now think about it like if you have a complex data model, then uh, it will give you a nice uh, uh, UI to showcase all your tables and showing the relationship between uh, how those relationships are placed between these two tables. Now, if you see over here, this says save and exit. Now, this save and exit is nothing but saving this table, okay? So if you see this table, playing country and the sports table, which we have just created, now what it will do, it will just save the table. This will not save this diagram. Okay, so if I click on save and exit, now this is also one of the limitation which I have mentioned that uh, ideally it should allow us to save the, uh, the data model interface so that whenever we want to again go back uh, and view the data model, then we should have a place to save this data model or a ER diagram or whatever name you can call this. So if I click on save and exit, it will say when you are done, click save and exit. The action will save the table and relationship. So if I click on save and exit, it will save your table, it will save your relationship, and it will persist that information in the uh, dataverse. Now, once you save this table, then uh, again, the limitation is that you will not be able to go back and view this particular diagram. So in the near future, I'm assuming that uh, once uh, the another release waves comes in from a dataverse perspective, then I'm pretty much sure there will be a way through which you will be able to navigate uh, to this particular diagram which we have just created. Now, saving the table also takes uh, time, uh, but uh, after like a minute or so, you should be able to save this uh, entire data and the uh, data schema. Now. Now we have created two tables. Now that's a custom table which we have created, which is uh, playing country and uh, sports. Now, if I want to go back to that particular schema uh, or the data uh, table, I, there is no way to go back. Now, if I click on sports over here, I should be able to see the old interface, you know? So that's also one of the limitation which I've highlighted. Uh, also, like uh, if there are like lot of custom tables or lot of tables which is currently available within your dataverse, and if you are not creating any new table, then there is no way to go into that new data experience interface. The new data experience currently only works for uh, the table which you are creating new, and if you are creating it from scratch, you know, and it will be only available during that period of time. But once you save the data schema and the data relationship, then that all interface is gone. Okay, so so that's it, folks. This is all about the new data experience, which is available in the Make Power Apps interface. Uh, over a period of time, Microsoft is going to add more features and try to make it more rich and more accessible. And you should be able to view the ER diagram basically, uh, even uh, if you edit or if even if you are not creating a new table, if the whatever relationship exists for your current dataverse environment, you should be able to view the data, new data experience ER diagram as well. Thanks for watching.